I, I love my dad. Um, I think, you know, being the only boy, um, although he worked nights and basically we had weekends, but we'd uh, go to the football together. Um, we'd show me how to repair bikes. Um, what he was doing in the house, he'd show me. He always took the time. In 1943, Dad was conscripted into the army. Um, he'd just completed uh, an apprenticeship through technical school as an engineer. Um, because of this, they, in their wisdom, decided to make him a tank driver, who was also the first line mechanic of the tank. He was captured just outside Eindhoven in 1944. Dad said, we couldn't have done much damage anyway. We only had three shells left. Um, all the compartments in the tank were filled up with wine, brandy, food, and they surrendered. The French Canadians took them back, um, or a party, escorting them back. Problem is, they entered the minefield. Um, and out of the five crew members, my dad was the only one that survived, and only one French Canadian soldier survived. Dad was. Um, covered in shrapnel in his back, the Canadian soldier was as well. After a while, they released him from the hospital. Um, he went along and he was put on a boat and he landed at Southampton. So they marched from Southampton up to a little place just outside Stratford-on-Avon. People have to remember they were prisoners of war, although they weren't treated that bad by the captors as such, but life was cold no contact with home. On a whole, I think most people were resigned to the fact that they were prisoners and that was the end of their war and they had to make the most of it. He was still a prisoner up to obviously the end of the war in 1945, but the British did not repatriate German soldiers till 1948. Dad always said he, he never wanted to go back. He said, he said I've, I've got nothing to go back to. By that point, my dad's mother had died. Never knew his father anyway. Um, all he had left was an aunt and an uncle. And where he came from was taken over by the Russians and he didn't want to be under control of the communists. I don't think he ever really felt 100%, even when he was able to vote. And when he voted, he stopped then having to sign the register, obviously, because he'd become a British subject. But I don't think in my heart he was ever felt that it was 100% home. He's a very good father. Um, I admire him. I still do now, even though he's passed away. And I like to think I'm keeping his memory alive through my two girls I've got. Um, I mention him a lot of the time. He's, he's still there. I've talked to him a lot of days by myself, you know, just saying, oh, Blimey, me, Dad, what did I do there, you know? If I had to cite my dad in three words, I would say honest, loving, and my best friend. <laughs>